So when we start up uh, UEFN, we are going to be working from the Epic Games launcher, uh, which is this. Um, now, if you've not seen the Epic Games launcher before, because you're new to Unreal Engine more generally, this is a place where you come to get lots of your games. So you can buy games in here. It's uh, a competitor to Steam. Uh, we need to be in the library section. It doesn't seem obvious, but uh, Unreal Engine is not the where UEFN lives if you're used to using Unreal. It actually lives here on the library. I've already got them installed, but you need to make sure you have Fortnite installed. Uh, if you don't, there are ways around it, but ideally you'd have Fortnite installed. And I mean, obviously here I've got loads of the free games that come with um, uh, with the Epic Games launcher that have been added to my library, but I've also got in here Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So you have to search for it and install it. And then when, you, uh, when you've got it all installed, you can launch. And we'll let this run. Now it's important that you have a machine that's got a good enough spec. It has to have um, a specification that will play most AAA computer games. Uh, Unreal Engine is what is underneath UEFN. It does require quite a lot of processing power. So I'd recommend having uh, an RTX 2060 graphics card or higher, um, 60 gigabyte of RAM, and a fairly uh, good processor, an i7 or an i9 would be ideal. Anything you're sort of smaller than that and you're going to struggle to run. Uh, anything sort of meaningful. Doesn't mean you won't be able to, but it's not going to be that easy to use. Uh, now, if you have used Fortnite Creative before, you know that within the game Fortnite, there is a whole creative ecosystem that you can use. And uh, and that uses the player controls and you can, you can do that within the game. So that means it can do on PlayStation, on the phone. Um, now that is available on Android in the, in the U European region. So there's lots of different ways that you can um, you can get to it. So uh, I appreciate this has gone full screen on my screen, so I'll make it smaller in a moment once it's freshened up. But what will happen is that first time you ever launch Unreal uh, Editor Fortnite, you will have a um, a window that looks like this. This one I'm to get to, which is your project browser. Now I usually have this ticked on open last projects on the startup. That allows uh, me to go straight into the last project. It's actually a bit frustrating if you want to swap around different projects, um, as we are doing right now. So in here, I've got a whole load of projects and team projects live in here. So Copper Canon and my company, we have uh, four different uh, key projects that we're working on that live in there. And they're the ones that get shared via source control, which we're going to come to in a later lesson. So it's important to, uh, to make sure things are set up correctly. You can see the little symbols here. I've got some, you know, some test content. That download symbol means it's not downloaded onto my computer. So that's not something I can use without downloading it. If I select it, it gives me an opportunity to sync. It syncs it from the source control system, brings it onto my computer, onto my uh, my designated folder for all my UEFM projects, and then I can access it and use it. Uh, these ones here, you can see that these have already been downloaded onto my computer. And um, if I open this, it will, it will just open straight into the, the test environment. Um, if it says sync here, it's because you don't have the latest version of that project. It might be that someone else is working on it or you're working on another computer. Um, so if, for instance, I go to Maze Runner, which I know I've been working on recently. No, I've already synced it. <laughs> um, you will find uh, it will say sync, which means that you have to draw down the latest versions of that project. Sure. Now, on the left here, we have all of these island templates. Now, the thing about all of this is that it can be a little bit overwhelming when you first start. So I'm just going to show you it, but we're actually going to start with a blank map, which is the best way to start. Um, in Island templates, we have uh, Four Guys and Rocket Racing maps because they're Epic Games' IP as well, um, and some just generic islands that you can use. And we'll, we'll be starting off with the blank or the simple. Okay, uh, these give you a good place to start if you want to go for a full Fortnite island and build it yourself. Um, and it doesn't come with anything in particular device-wise. Uh, there's no code built into it, basically. So they're just good environments. Ignore Lego Islands. That's a whole other um, a whole other area of UEFN. But if you go to the feature examples in here, you will see a whole load of things which give you uh, examples of how to build certain parts of the UEFN world. So Intro to UEFN is a is a good one just because it's all laid out nicely in the gallery. Um, you can uh, you can have a look at the VFX system or the Verse system. Now, if you open these up, it will be a little bit overwhelming if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, so, for instance, I went to the animation one first because I wanted to know how they did animation. 
I managed to look around and see well enough that it's exactly the same as it is in Unreal. So but I'm happy with that. I'll leave it. Um, otherwise, I try to avoid using anything from in here. The game examples, on the other hand, are much more complicated because these will come with full interaction and game systems already built. So if you're going to start by building a, say, for instance, an elimination game, you might take this map and use that as a starting point for building your game because it's already got the bits in it. Um, now, that sounds like a good idea when you're first starting. It's not. This is a great idea if you know what you're doing. It's not a great idea if you don't because nothing in there is going to make any sense to you and you'll just get confused. Um, now, I started with the stand-up template, which is a nice, simple one because it comes with pre-built animation and sequencing systems, which is quite useful for what we're doing at Copper Candle, building um, live events or events in Fortnite. So ignore pretty much everything there. Um, go to Island Templates. And before I click on this, I'm just going to point out here, getting started docs and the community. Really useful tools. There is a good selection of information available on the um, uh, on the UEFN or the, the Unreal Engine dev sites, dev.epicgames. Go there and check out all of the details um, that you know it has that can help you understand exactly what all the different functions are and all the different devices are. So we can start loading up a, a blank template. Um, project location is saved to my D drive. I have a project folder called UEFN. Um, the project verse path will be automatic. That's something you don't need to worry about because we're not going to do verse here at the moment. But just so you know, that is where the verse files get saved. And I'm just going to call this test project. Now, Unreal Vision Control is something that you might need to set up once you're in the editor. If it's already been built and you've already created a team, you should see it here. Otherwise, you've got this, no team, just you. I'm going to leave it on my Copper Candle team because actually I want to show you how source control works because for the people that are going to be using this videos first, you're going to be working as part of the Copper Candle team. So you need to know how to access our source control. Uh, if you're doing your own project, then you will also want to have your own source control system. Uh, creating a team will take you to the uh, Epic Games Fortnite creator panel, where you can start to build all of your, uh, your team members and build your projects. And that's where you publish from eventually as well. So test projects, I've selected blank, and I'm going to hit create. There we go. That's the end of that lesson. That takes us through to the startup. In the next lesson, we're going to start looking at how we can add devices.